Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead and get started with my presentation. I will try not to take up too much of your time. I know that I would get very angry if somebody interrupted my eating. And so I will uh, attempt not to do that. Uh, my name is Ben Whirl. I teach art at Carson Middle School. Uh, we teach 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. Um, my, my interest in Asian she's just comes kind of from a, a personal standpoint. I'm way into video games, into technology, computers. I also teach our uh, digital photography class, um, which uses a lot of um, Photoshop. And so um, I was already kind of into the computer side of things. And so when I came here last year, um, I was introduced to this and we actually developed this into a full semester long class um, that kids could sign up for. We called it uh, digital game design um, and it got a really, really great response. Um, we, uh, we filled up the class both semesters and had a lot of kids asking why they didn't uh, get into the class, why they can't, uh, why they couldn't take it. So. Uh, starting this coming school year, we're introducing, I'll be teaching a second section um, and then a couple of colleagues of mine who are here this year um, will also be taking on some sections as well. So we're really excited to be expanding the, the course offering at our school and um, I just saw the email uh, yesterday that um, Asian Cubes is also being offered um, for, uh, for schools to use so um, hopefully we can kind of start integrating maybe an advanced class as well. What I'd like to talk to you guys about today is sort of the final project that my classes do. Um, we call it the Indie Game Project. Um, this one basically happens after they've done pretty much all of the tutorials that you find on the wiki. And then um, the expectation is that they then develop their own games based on what they've learned. So um, I'm going to just kind of share it with you guys the process of that and show you an example. Um, so what they what they do is they do um, Frogger, Pac-Man, Space Invaders, Sokoban, and the Infection Simulation. That one's required. We usually have a lot more time than that, so we're able to do a couple of other games as well. Um, but those are the ones that they absolutely have to have done before they get into doing the uh, the indie game project. Um, students are expected to integrate the different computational thinking patterns that they've been learning over the course of it. So um, I usually have them choose um, between three and five of those um, to focus on. Uh, obviously some of them just kind of come up throughout the course of designing a game. Some you know that they didn't really intend to happen still happen. Um, but they have to be very intentional and deliberate about uh, including um, at least three of those all the way up to five. So we go through a couple of different stages. First of all, they write proposals for three different types of games that they want to want to create. We talk about game genres. We talk about story setting. Basically, all the, the pre planning um, for for how the game should be developed. Um, they also are required to um, start kind of creating character concepts, um, the setting for their game. Um, well, how does this setting work within the context of the characters? The idea here is that it's not random. We don't just want um, you know, people who are circles fighting against people who are squares for no particular reason. Um, so the, uh, the whole purpose of this is to make their planning extremely deliberate and um, thereby kind of impacting the overall quality of the game that they create. Um, they come up with their main character. Um, they also need to come up with some sort of conflict um, so that there is a, a purpose to their game. Um, they also write a uh, sort of a, I call it like chapter one of their game, uh, which is just a, a paragraph or a page long um, piece of writing that just describes the lead up to what I call chapter two, which is their actual game. So anyone who came and sat down, they'd be able to explain this is sort of the backstory of our game. And um, so when they start to play it, they really get a, a sense of, of why what's happening happens. As an art teacher, I really, really uh, put a strong emphasis on um, the character creation and um, depictions and stuff like that. We actually spend 
about a week and a half just creating character art um, before they even open up the computers to actually start designing their games. So the process they go through is they first of all, um, they download some uh, drawing tutorials. There's a really great website online that just has over a thousand tutorials on it that's just step-by-step -step drawing. Keep in mind that the students that are placed in this class are not art students. They signed up because they wanted to, to do video games. And so these are not students that I necessarily had in my art classes. So it's not really necessary that, that the kids be these wonderful artists. And that's why these tutorials are really helpful. So these are some tutorials that a student of mine came up with. She, uh, she came up with this idea for a game where it was a house that was on fire and this, um, this lone firefighter had to go in and save each of the, each of the um, family members. And each of the family members had their own backstory as to why, you know, who they were and what their lives are. Um, while it doesn't really affect the game so much, it actually kind of makes you care a little bit about why you're going in to, to rescue them. So these were the tutorials that she downloaded, and keep in mind this is not an art student, um, and she came up with these sketches here um, for her characters, and then um, we added we added color after that. So after they have the basic design of their characters down, what they do then is we we print off some grid paper, and um, they grid out if they're planning to do the standard 32 by 32 um, pixel depictions. They count out 32 by 32 squares on the grid paper, and um, they create their sort of rough rough drafts for their uh, depictions. Um, this is really fun for them because they get to sort of like condense down all that detail they had on their their character sketches, and they condense it down into these really cool um, drawings. What this also does is it takes so much of the time that they spend changing and correcting things on um, the depictions in the actual program because all they're basically doing is copying the sketch that they already did. Um, I also do them have a basic, uh, I have them do a basic layout of what the, uh, what the actual worksheet will look like. Um, and I'll show you what this looks like in Asian Sheets in just a moment. But this is just sort of the basic layout plan. Again, by doing this on paper ahead of time or as homework, they're able to, um, to save a lot of time in the program. So here are those same agents now in, in the actual uh, program itself. Um, and of course they do multiple depictions um, and stuff like that. Um, what they do next is I have them do a plan sheet for um, each agent, the number of depictions they're intending to have as well as whatever um, actions and behaviors they need to have. I really like this because it helps them organize interactions between different agents. If one is going to have a collision with another agent, then they really um, this allows them to kind of see the, conceptually the uh, the link between the two. Um, it's not shown here, but the other side of the sheet is a flow chart of the beginning to the end of the game, um, and it allows the the students to say, okay, this is what where your character starts. These are the steps he takes to win, and then there are offshoots on the uh, flowchart for um, losing conditions as well. So then we input those behaviors into the the uh, program. Um, over on the left hand side there, you can see just the number of depictions that um, this student made just for different objects and things that went into the, the game world. Um, I like I like spending this amount of time on that. It gives these students a huge sense of, of pride and ownership on, on the finished project when it's so, so very unique to them. Um, this girl was an extreme like detailed person. She wanted different furniture on each level of the house, different pictures with, uh, or different picture frames with different pictures inside. Um, so this is what her game looked like when it was uh, finished and ready to go. You can see at the bottom right hand corner is the fireman and then on the left hand side there you can um, see the different family members are all asleep. The dad fell asleep at the kitchen table down there. Um, and uh, there's a printer and there's cabinets and just all sorts of really cool stuff that um, were all not necessarily necessary but really added to that, that sense of pride that she had for her game. So the fire starts off at the top and as it's as it, the game goes, the fire starts uh, slowly kind of creeping down um, towards the family. So as the fireman, you have to go up, you, you have an action that causes you to wake them up, 
and then they follow you out of the house and when you get down to the exit they uh, they leave um, and then once you get all of them down or if all of them um, they, turn, they turn to a little pile of ashes <laughs> but um, if everybody burns up then it says you lose and if ever if you get everybody out of the house it gives you a message and if you get just maybe one person out of the house it has a different message for that as well so she put a lot of uh, a lot of hard work into this um, the scoring rubric, I know that a lot of you guys will probably be looking online at the wiki for um, rubrics. This is sort of a, it's a, the Frogger rubric that's online, it was created by somebody I can't remember. I use that basic template for all my stuff. Um, I, I don't necessarily like having like the two and three point in the middle because in my mind you kind of either did it or you didn't. Um, but it's really nice for stuff like Frogger, Pac-Man by saying, do the, does the frog move in all four directions? Does the frog get squashed when hit by the truck? So um, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of stuff like this that you can find online. So after they get done with their indie game, they, um, we created these sort of arcade cabinet style faceplates that went around the outside of our um, computers. And it has, they were, they designed their own logos to go up the top, and you can't really see it because I'm not a very good photographer. But down at the bottom there, um, it has all the controls and instructions for objectives and stuff like that. So conceivably, anybody could just come down, sit down, look at the bottom of the screen, and they would they'd be able to tell exactly what they're supposed to do. Um, so after we did that, we had an arcade day where it was during school hours. We invited um, parents and other other classes from throughout the school, and they came in and they were allowed to just go around. Was, we wanted it to just feel like a, a 1980s arcade, um, and so everyone could just go to any any uh, game that they wanted to. The creator of the game was always on hand to answer questions, troubleshoot, anything like that. Um, but really, we just wanted everybody to, to just be able to kind of walk through and, and do their thing. Um, we uh, we had several, all of our administrators from the school showed up. Um, the lady in the orange coat right there is our district superintendent, um, as well as a couple of their administrators from district office came in. So it was a really, really nice time to just show off what we're able to do and what these kids are learning. Um, and. Just the, I really like this picture on the left because this is a, a 14 year old kid who's explaining to this very smart person um, just exactly how much she doesn't understand about how this game works. And it was, it was a really, really cool opportunity. Um, we had a lot of kids come through. I, I think I lost count after a while, but the, um, we had several classes from, from in the school come in. We also had parents coming in and siblings and just a lot of people um, that probably saw on paper, you know, game design and thought one thing. And when they came in here and and saw it, um, probably you know just expanded their their concept of that. I encourage my students, as you you probably will want to, to if if a person does have a question, to actually open up the behaviors list and say this is how I did it. Um, because it's very, you know, it's very easy just to look at the game and say, wow, you know, this is cool. But when you actually see pages and pages of behaviors listed on there, it's, uh, it's very impressive. And especially when it's, you know, it's these 6th, 7th, and 8th grade kids, um, a lot of whom um, are not necessarily the types to excel in other classes, are doing extremely well um, in this one. Yes. Yeah, so these are just some more, some more pictures. And the other thing that was really important is we had a lot of food, and that really, that really brought people in, and it caused them to stay probably for a little while as well. So, um, not sure how many more pictures I have. Okay, that's it. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, or um, I, I have a lot of resources, but you guys are gonna want to make your own, uh, I'm sure. But if you guys just want ideas for, you know the rubrics or how to, you know, just how I outlined any of these projects, um, just let me know. Yeah. They are not wiki, uh, although they should be. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I will, that'll, that'll be my goal before the fall, is to get, get all this stuff up there for sure. Yes? And this is all during art class or is this an elective? 
This is, this is, it's kind of interesting because I, I am an art teacher, but this is actually one of our, it, it doesn't fall under necessary, it, it is an elective, um, but it's not one of our art classes per se. Um, this is one of our, our media classes, like our, our digital media classes, so um, it, it is an elective, um, so kids can choose to, to get into it. Um, we had 29 students per semester because um, that's the number of computers that we had. Um, and just something that was kind of interesting is, you know, being an art teacher, I, I have kids who get shoved into that class because, you know, there's nowhere else for them. And they're constantly telling me how much they hate art and how much they would love to not be taking art. Um, and I, I did not have a single student drop either semester. We had exactly the same number of students at the start as we did at the end, which I have never had happen um, in any of my classes. So at what point when you're when you're doing all this uh, drawing and drawing to scale and doing all that, what, what point did you show them the game so they kind of had could, could see the moving from here to here? Well, keep in mind that this indie game, this came at the end of a semester of them doing every single other game that Asian oh. Sheets had. So they, they already knew how to do all those computational thinking patterns. They knew how to create depictions and stuff like that. This is just really the culmination of all of their learning and um, just being able to really show off. Because throughout the whole semester, you guys will probably experience this as well, they are just constantly asking, well, can I do this? Can I try this? You know, And this is like their opportunity to just completely go crazy and do exactly what they want to do. And so how much time do you give them for the this was this whole entire process from like conceptualization to our our big day was about a month. So and about you four have weeks. Um, I saw them every day. Yeah, we have 50, 56 minute class periods every day. So um, you can certainly speed it up. Like I said, as an art teacher, the art is really important to me. So we've spent more time on that than maybe someone who wasn't as interested in the art would. But um, I, I think that it's to their benefit because you know especially the ones that are really into games they know the importance of like a cool character like if they see like the master chief or you know like the cool guys they see on call of duty they know that it's important to have someone who's really visually striking and they they'll want to spend that time like really making it look cool any other questions okay like i said if you guys want you know to just see any of those handouts they were just kind of like clips of it, um, you can come talk to me and I'd be happy to put these up on the wiki. I know I should do that. That's fine. All right, that's it. Thank you. <laughs>